I'm sitting here in the Palouse with Michael Reichman, and it's time for another Kevin and Michael's toy shop. And it seems like we just did one of these not too long ago, but if you could see the table filled here with new toys and tools. No, no, the, okay, you know what? Either we're gonna call them tools or we're gonna call them toys. Well, okay, they're toys. I'm, I'm happy with calling them toys. All right. So let me kick off here with some toys for the iPhone and we'll get right into it because we have an awful lot of cool stuff to go over. Right. So the first thing I wanted to share today is this. This is a, a lens uh, by uh, Moondog Labs and it clips onto an iPhone and the first few things, it's an, how do you say that? An anamorphic. 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 Squeezed and then unsqueezed. So what that means is this can slip over the iPhone and it, it really is pretty cool the way they've thought this out. And it slides on there. Yeah. There's like a, a groove and it, there's a track and it slides right. on. And then this is a soft clamp. Right. And now all you need to do is open up the Filmic Pro app and in the settings, select. Which is a off. terrific app. It, it, it's what we use for mm -hmm. anything that we need to do from the iPhone and so forth. And you select the Moondog Labs um, uh, little checkbox. And essentially you use this to uh, do these great wide cinema type uh, of shooting here with the iPhone. It's absolutely brilliant. So let me ask you this. Yeah. Why do I want this? If there are a lot of new filmmakers out there. They're not only doing YouTube videos, but there are guys that are doing instant uh, uh, documentaries and or uh, films, independent films, and they're shooting with iPhones. Mm -hmm. And what this does is gives you that widescreen effect right. from you know the more compact frame. Right. It, it looks all skinny. I mean, actually, so I would look really good <laughs> if we didn't uncompress it. Right. So it's a, it's a cinema look. It's a cinema look, and okay. it really does a nice job. If you go to Moondog Labs uh, website, and all the information is in the article that accompanies this, uh, they have some great examples mm -hmm. of what this lens is capable of. Great. So uh, we've been having a little bit of fun with it. What does it sell for? Around 200 Okay. It's not bad, but it's a well-done lens, and optically it's supposed to be really good. I haven't had a chance to really test it out, but... Uh, Chris was looking forward to doing well, that. Well, just so it's so small. Yes, it's it's pretty cool. It fits nicely into a little case, and <laughs> that's it. Okay, cool. <clears throat> the next thing is uh, this. This DxO uh, camera. DxO1. DxO1 camera attaches to the iPhone. Again, specifically for, for the, the iPhone. iPhone. So essentially what happens is we'll slide the lens cover down and it pops up a lightning connector. Carefully plug it in. Does a wasp come with it? No. no. Okay. <laughs> but uh, we're out in the wild here, and we're yeah. <laughs> we don't mind the wasps and the bees. And well, the wild, the, the wild of a park bench, yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> with, with kids playing in the background and everything. Right. It's quite nice. But uh, so this is how the DxO uh, works. It's a neat little okay. camera. So it and attaches the, via a lightning connector. Lightning connector. It opens mm -hmm. up the app automatically, right. and essentially you just basically take pictures. Mm -hmm. It has all the typical settings, shutter priority, aperture priority, it shoots raw. It's got a super raw setting so that under low light, the super raw setting takes a number of exposures mm -hmm. and makes a new raw file so you have very little noise. One inch sensor. One inch sensor. Storage is internal. Micro uh, SD. Micro, micro SD. You can shoot JPEGs if you want. You can have the JPEGs go to your phone if you have space enough to do that so you can view them right away. Mm -hmm. It's a clever little device. A little illuminated LCD to show you all the various settings. Yes, and it's then uh, you can use your finger. It's a touch sensitive LED screen so okay. you can move to the different settings and okay, set it. It's cool. pretty cool. Anyway, it's just one more little fun thing. There's a lot of new companies looking at how to make the iPhone work and uh, let's take a look at another one of those. And this baby. This is the Olympus Air. No, that's an Olympus lens. That's a lens and a camera, that's a camera right take, here. Take off the lens. So this is the camera. There's the sensor. Yep. Right. It's a four third, micro four thirds uh, sensor. That's it's, a big sensor. That's 16 megapixel. Right. And it's the same that's in most of the uh, Olympus cameras. Right. It takes all the Olympus and Panasonic micro four thirds lenses. Right. Once it, it plops on. So essentially what happens is we can unclip this, set that to large. So again, we just take our iPhone. That's an iPhone 6. iPhone 6 Plus. Six, oh, we'll no. stretch it on there. And when you turn it on, it's a Wi-Fi connection, not a Bluetooth. So it's a Wi-Fi connection and it goes through and cycles through. And then when it gets the connection, 
then you basically take pictures. Like and the that. pictures are recorded to a micro SD, micro card. SD card in RAW and or JPEG. Correct. Okay. And it's got a built-in battery. Built-in battery, which you do charge internally. There's a, a little US micro USB slot, so you plug it in mm -hmm. or use an external uh, charging pad. But this thing's really tiny. I like that. Now, I think this is an interesting lens choice. So it's the 12 to 50. It's a slowish lens, Probably, but yes. Yeah, it, it, but it's capable. So it's like a sensor. 24 to 100. Yep. So for walk around, yeah, that's, yeah. that's nice. And this lens actually is a motorized zoom, so you can do motorized zooms this way, or right. push for and pull it, and, or, right. or in doing manual zooms. And you can also zoom from the app. Correct. So, and you can also have um, all their artistic settings. They have a lot of artistic settings. So Correct. if you want, like you know, vivid pop or you know, black and white or sepia, you can do all that. So really little versatile for mm -hmm. what, just a few hundred dollars. So yeah, 300 you know, bucks, 300 bucks. And you know, you got to buy the lens, got to have an iPhone. So mm -hmm. it kind of adds up, but most right. people have. Oh, let's, uh, let's make sure we understand. This is not iPhone only. This is I, an iPhone or an Android and it doesn't have to be attached. Yeah. So this is kind of cool. Like I can be aiming at it, Chris and you know, I could be like talking to you and he would be thinking that I'm or not taking a picture. I can be just doing this and while I, you are telling me what to point at. A little to the left, a little to the right. Right, right there. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, it's a, once again, it's a, there's just a lot of really, really interesting new cameras and gadgets and things coming out. For I think what appeals to me here about several of these is, you know, we're in the era of um, smartphone photography and yet the manufacturers are finding ways, if you can't beat them, join them. Yeah. <laughs> and so they're saying, okay, you've got a smartphone, Android, iPhone, whatever, and we'll give you the capability of making this a more versatile device. I'm gonna buy the Olympus Air, I already own an yeah, iPhone 6 Plus. I'm going to Italy on vacation next month, and I'm going to take a you know camera. I'll probably bring um, mm -hmm. you know a, a, a serious camera for doing some serious landscape work. I'm going to be in Tuscany, but for walking around the streets in Rome and in Florence, yeah, I don't like being a tourist. <laughs> and so, having this guy in my pocket. You know, yeah, and, and you know. Like, now that you got me thinking, <laughs> let me. This is uh, a really right stuff. It's nothing super new, but it's new to us. It's a really right stuff uh, table tripod. And, um, you know, we do a lot of interviews where we go in and sit down and, you know, we're sitting with somebody. So this comes in very handy for us. But now that you got me thinking, there's no reason, you know, this can't be put together. So imagine this this tripod by really right stuff. You know, you're sitting at some restaurant and mm -hmm. you know, you're overlooking the town and the sunset and all that beautiful stuff. And you decide, well, I'm not gonna hang around with the camera. So you just kind of you know, bring this little baby, clip that on, set this up, aim it where you want, go enjoy your glass of wine <laughs> and shoot your pictures. <laughs> and if there is a person of interest at another table, you basically, you know, can set this up and just, you know, dum da dum da dum da dum da dum. Yeah, we can throw a napkin over it. This good spy <laughs> stuff. <laughs> this kind of this fun. This good spy <laughs> stuff. So I like it. Anyway, it's uh, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> One last iPhone thing, and uh, then because I'm looking at some of the cool stuff you have on your end of the table before <laughs> we come back to some of the other. We have an right. awful lot of stuff. This. <laughs> I, I'm having more fun with this. This is a GoPro Session 4, a GoPro 4 Session, and this camera can go down to 30 feet underwater. Without an external housing. Without an external housing, and it's, it's they, the original GoPros were sort of difficult to learn how to operate. Um, mm. A lot of little settings, and because they were miniature, you kind of had to finagle. Once you got there, it was cool, and once you got to learn how. But this is simple. Just press it once, and until it beeps, and now I'm taking a video. Right. And so what's nice is I can just take the video and I can turn the app on here, okay, <laughs> and it's Bluetooth, but I can actually see, sure. once again, on the iPhone is serving as 
the viewfinder sure. for this. Sure. So, and you can do some of the settings and do all that different things. And they're coming out with an app that you can edit uh, the images, you can download the images. But this is just really cool. Now, I know that you and I are getting into some extreme sports. Yeah, no, when I go skydiving next, yeah. I'm going to use that. And we're picking up snowboarding, <laughs> and you know, so we can stick this on. And you know, I've, I actually have a in my kit here. A little strap that kind of goes over my head and it kind of like <laughs> so we're well, having fun i tried to strap this to my cat <laughs> she wasn't very cooperative but i think of the possibilities so anyway once again if you guys are interested in doing some fun videos and you know we're talking a lot about mm -hmm. 4k videos and all the different videos that these cameras are capable sure. of and it's a lot of fun to begin to explore and add this to the repertoire. It's only a few hundred dollars. You know, there's a little housing clamp that basically kind of slides in and out, and essentially that's the block. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've had fun with this thing. No, and, that's uh, great. So, um, <laughs> that's all this iPhone stuff. Let's talk a bit of some of the um, cool things you might have brought over Well, here. Uh, this week, of course, is uh, A7R2 week, and we have a uh, major review uh coming up and we have a uh, video on it coming up uh, and here i have it fully decked out <laughs> uh, this is with uh sony's uh, cinema lens uh the uh, pz 28 to 135 uh, which I love. It's a fabulous lens, and I've got the battery grip. Wow. And you know what? <laughs> it's it's heavy, but it's not crazy heavy. <laughs> you know. You know what I love about you? <laughs> <laughs> when you go all out, <laughs> you go all out. All right, give that back. No, no. Here. No. You can have the lighter, smaller one. This is mine, by the way. <laughs> I think. But we have, you know, uh, I think uh, hardly anything but praise for the so Sony A7R II. Yep. Uh, fabulous camera. Here we have uh, one of the baddest lenses uh, from Zeiss, or as I call it, the badass lenses. And um, uh, these are these are really wonderful, serious uh, tools uh, that are going to be appropriate for just about any photographer uh, who wants to uh, use a new mirrorless camera, 42 megapixels, built-in body stabilization, 399 I have no idea why it's not 400 <laughs> 399 on sensor phase detection focus points covering most of the sensor uh, five frames a second 4k video this is this is the hot camera of 2015 it is and um, I've got the battery grip on here um, I, yeah, as well as you do yeah I've got battery grip along with this, this is, big mother lens this uh, battery grip also works on the a7 um, two yep and the really right stuff L bracket, mm -hmm. uh, which we've shown before, but one of the things that I do like is it does have the Allen wrench so that you don't have to go around searching for it. It's built in and held in there by a magnet. So mm -hmm. we're having an awful lot of fun with our A7R2s. So the other uh, Sonys uh, that have just come out are uh, the RX104, fourth generation, uh, again, uh, new sensor, it's not only backside illuminated, uh, but it also now has the electronics, much of the electronics RAM off the chip, and so it runs at just blinding rates. Um, the RX10 Mark II, God, it's hard to keep all these <laughs> numbers and letters straight. Um, this is basically the same sensor, same electronics, uh, but here you have uh, the an equivalent of a 24 to 200 fixed f2.8. Oh. It's not a variable lens. Um, articulated LCD, 4K video, and on and on and on and on. And again, we have uh, reports and reviews and videos oh, about the... these uh, on the site. Uh, either they're currently there or they're coming up, coming up. depending on when uh, this is uh, posted and when people view it. Uh, it's hard to put a time on it these is. things. Uh, this is either present, past, or future. It could be. But no matter <laughs> what, if you look at the, below the video here, yeah. you'll find uh, links to all these products. Exactly. One of the things that I really like about this camera is, and this is where I think the brilliance of engineering with Sony. So if you power it on, uh, the lens opens up. There's a ring here for focusing or f-stop, depending on how you set it. It's got a viewfinder built in. 
It's got a flash that pops up. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's got a screen that articulates. Where's the I, coffee maker? <laughs> it's like we're the engineering, uh, and, and not to mention what you know, knowing what goes into cameras, sure. what is stuck inside here to do it all. It's just uh, pretty phenomenal. Really like it. My only complaint is I've got a big thumb, and when I actually work with it, you know, my thumb, you know, covers up, and I've been making a lot of movies by accident. Mm -hmm. But some of them are actually pretty good. <laughs> so anyway, that's the RX uh, 104 clever little camera. Right. Now, switching away from uh, Sony, uh, who seems to uh, be getting a lot of airtime from not just from us, but from lots of people, uh, uh, here is a new Canon. And uh, the report is uh, online. I am enamored, highly enamored of this camera. It's a one inch sensor, a Sony sensor, by the way. <laughs> um, and it's got a 24 to 600 millimeter equivalent lens. Now, it's not unlike the Sony uh, RX10 Mark II, which has uh, a uh, 24 to 200 fixed at 2.8. This is 24 to 600, but it's variable between 2.8 and 5.6. Oh. But this is a terrific lens. Usually so-called super zooms really leave a lot to be desired. They have small sensors and the lenses aren't that great. I don't know what Canon has done, but they have put a phenomenal lens on this camera. Out at the far extreme at 600 mil, it just gives up a little bit. But in the four five hundred range and all the way back to twenty four, it's a remarkable lens, and um, the sensor is a one inch. The quality, if you're going up to thirteen by nineteen prints, absolutely terrific. You know, I'm surprised because you know I would never have expected you to adapt and like a camera because we can take these things under face value and if you look at this you go oh, well you know it's for you know the point and shoot crowd but yep. the capabilities that you've shown that this has and the well quality, you've seen the images the yeah quality coming off of it um surprisingly good you yep. know it's kind of embarrassing i've got my big 150 to 600 <laughs> zoom out there and you're standing next to me going, hey. yeah and i got the same thing right here and i'm not even need a tripod <laughs> let me let me yeah, that's, yeah, um, <laughs> but it isn't a toy. This is a serious, is high a quality here? camera, and it's got a scale that shows the equivalent 35 yep. millimeter full frame focal lengths. Uh, kudos to Canon. You've built a terrific camera. I think Canon has done as well, if not better, with the Sony sensor as Sony has done. Yes. And this lens is head and shoulders over any super zoom I've ever seen. The downside is the viewfinder is an optional accessory and it's external. It's a very good electronic And you'd viewfinder, recommend it? And I'd absolutely recommend it. Um, but it does make the camera bulkier and makes it more expensive. But you know what? Life is compromise. And I happen to think that this, this to me is, the, the, I love shooting long and being able to work at three, four, five, six hundred mil equivalent in something that just fits into a small bag. This is going to be with me on a lot of trips from now on. Yeah, the other night we were shooting from the top of uh, Step Butte uh, here in the Palouse and I had my 150 to 600 out and, you know, Michael has this small <laughs> system out. And we kind of compared notes and this thing is great. Like I tell you, it's like I almost want to go home and get one, but it's just like, oh. You don't need another camera. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's it's pretty neat. I can see where that could be coming in as a, a very handy camera. So the last one on my side of the table, <laughs> excuse me, is uh, the Leica S. Uh, this is the new, oh, isn't it gorgeous? Yeah, yeah. Wanna, so beautiful. Uh, this is the S0007, yep. uh, and it is the version that was announced at Photokina in September of 2014. This is now, we're filming this in August of 2015, so 11 months later, the camera is just about to uh, be announced as shipping. Um, uh, this is a, a pre-production camera. I've been doing a little testing for Leica, and I have to say, the image quality is nothing short of phenomenal. Um, I won't go into detail because this is still pre-production, but uh, I have nothing but praise. 
for a lot of the aspects of this camera, but as readers will find in my full review and in the separate video that we have on this, where I go into a lot of detail, I have some questions about the user interface. Uh, just yeah. a just a work a work of art. It, you, the, the the engineering on that and just the look and of course you know having held it earlier in the field, just luscious. Yeah, yeah. They've so, really done a nice job with that. Typical know, Leica. Typical Leica. Yeah, which means really excellent when it comes to uh, build quality. Um, this is something if you can afford it. Uh, I think a lot of people would enjoy having And we have a lot of friends that have them and they love them. Yep. So anyway, that's pretty cool. What, I'm done on my side your of the arm, table. Well, if you're going to talk about medium format, then you know before I move to the last few items, <laughs> this is my medium format camera. This is Phase 1 XF. Um, this is their newest camera body with an IQ3 uh, 50 megapixel, uh, 350 they call it, uh, on the back. Uh, phase one finally has put together a camera body that is worthy of sitting in between the great optics they have and the super backs they have. Yeah. And they interface and talk to each other very nicely. Uh, we have, once again, you know, a separate uh, video on this and a discussion plus our introduction uh, article and video that we did when the camera was released. But, you know, the simplicity of uh, the top, the touch screens up top and being able to just very quickly yeah. do your touch settings. Touch screen OLED that's bright enough to be used in daylight. That's wonderful. And, you know, rather than have a lot of control buttons, they have three, uh, you know. Three wheels. Three wheels and one, you know, well, actually you can customize. There's another mm -hmm. uh, button up front here. So you can customize these buttons. This is with the 40 to 80 millimeter zoom, heavy lens. One of the best lenses they've ever made though. So mm -hmm. it's a very, very capable lens. So uh, we're very happy with it. And one thing that the readers might like and to know is the fact that they finally figured Yay. out how to do, yeah. and there's a waist level viewfinder they also offer if you want to put it on there. Um, so I think we're gonna see some surprises with the modularity of this. And mm -hmm. uh, it's just a nice no, new- finally, finally phase one has a body that matches the quality of their Schneider lenses and, and their backs. Uh, it's, it's been a long wait, but glad to see it. And it's interesting, the, the engineering viewpoints between the way the Japanese do things and the way the Europeans and the Danes do things, uh, uh, like you're like, uh, you know, the buttons are smooth, mm -hmm. you can reach them, but they're kind of recessed and everything's smooth and it's, they're just quite nice. You know, I have to say that this has a Leica-like um, physical aspect, yeah. you know, the materials, the feel, the ergonomics uh, is very much that contemporary European design and it's so dissimilar from the, how shall I put it, uh, where's my, uh, you know, this is, yep. uh, not, not saying it's of lesser quality, but things protrude, they stick out, they're not as integrated. See, these are traditional. Yeah. I think, you know, this is, this is very old school. It's fine, no complaints, but this is so elegant. Yeah, just, uh, you know, very quickly, you, you know, touch mirror up. Uh, they even have a seismograph in here. So if this camera is actually sitting on a tripod, you know, you can actually see the vibrations that might be coming through your tripod. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting, you know, we all stand by our tripods. But when I was actually shooting with this, I would actually see that even by standing close by or just moving mm -hmm. my foot a little bit, the vibration would shoot up. So I'd set the timer mirror up and basically step back five steps to mm -hmm. make sure that I got an accurate picture. That's, that's a first so, as far as I'm aware of. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, they've always had it, but apparently, you know, and it's like an earthquake thing. You can actually see the graph <laughs> go up and down, so it's pretty neat. Kev, that's a funny looking beast. The Sigma Quattro DP0. Yes. Once again, they've sent us a camera to try out and play with. And once again, I'll say this about it. The raw software is horrible. Mm -hmm. And the only thing I've shot with this is JPEGs. Mm -hmm. And the JPEGs I've shot are terrific. And if you have the patience of Job, yep. and you can take 20 minutes per image, you can get wonderful results out of raw, but life is too short. It, it really is. By the time you actually make a correction in raw, just one slider, you're waiting and waiting and waiting. And I understand it's been explained to me, at least by some third party people that think they know something, that unlike a lot of uh, our programs that we use, like Lightroom Capture One, that we're sort of work on a proxy, you know, this is actually working on the real raw. So mm -hmm. um, I hope they figure that out. 
Uh, my method of uh, preference with this, at least while I've had it, was to shoot uh, a bracketed JPEG, mm -hmm. uh, put them together, and I can do two things. I can work the HDR program in Photoshop and or uh, do layers and, and mask out certain things to bring the image up to where mm -hmm. it was. And, um, Look, it's one of the things you have to say about Sigma is their lens quality oh. has gone from mid-range to top tier. Their new art lenses are fantastic. Yep. Uh, I don't know about this particular lens because we haven't no. tested it yet, but the DP1 and the DP2 um, have excellent lenses. Uh, the Foveon sensor is capable, all, not doesn't always produce, but is capable of you know, stunning color quality. Um, so gotta give kudos to Sigma for persisting with Foveon, for producing a radically different camera Shape. design. Um, maybe not quite as ergonomic as we think it might be. Uh, it hurts the hand to hold it for any time. It really does. Time. Yeah. And it, you have to have three cameras to basically have a decent uh, range of vocal lengths to use. Right, so. non-interchangeable non lenses. And notwithstanding the lenses look and size, it is a fixed focal length lens. Uh, nobody argued with us in regards to what we had with the review. If you're willing to put up with the issues, mm -hmm. it's it's a very, very nice camera for image quality, but mm -hmm. there are a lot of options these days. I hope someday they can figure out how to <laughs> make things change a bit. Right. Um, while we're on the Sony, before we go off somewhere else, I just wanted to say that I've uh, recently taken um, ownership of this lens. This is the 90 millimeter macro uh, lens that Sony put mm -hmm. out, and this is one terrific lens. That is amazing. I don't own one, unlike you. Um, I'm saving my pennies for the Battis 85, and I don't do a lot of macro work, but when I was at the uh, Sony <clears throat> media event in Portland, I used that lens for a couple of days. Wow. And yeah, we've already put up an article on this. I've done a lot of macro work with it since then, mm -hmm. with flowers and butterflies and all sorts of things. Really very sweet. I do like the fact that you know you have uh, the the range that you yeah, can set focus for limiter, speed, yeah. focus limiter, uh, optical steady shot on or off, and you know you do have a focus lock button, mm -hmm. and it's a push pull for uh, focusing. So it's kind of nice if the yeah. autofocus gets there, you can lock it and then just move the camera back and forth when you're doing macro. Oly work. Olympus has done this for a while. Yep. They've had this design. Sony has now introduced it on several lenses. It's here on this. It's on. Uh, their cinema lens, same thing, back and forth for manual or autofocus. I like the design. Yep. It really, your hand is there anyhow, and you go from just using your fingers to support the camera to now manual focusing. Yep. So there's a lot of, lot of pluses to that, and I'm happy to see Sony moving in this direction, and if future lenses do the same thing, you know, that's great. On uh, one of our previous episodes, we covered the 35 millimeter Sony lens, and you know that had an f-stop ring. You know, I wish they would be consistent because if you know they would put an f-stop yeah. ring on some of these and you know all these other features and have a consistency to it, easy for the operators then because you have a consistency between the lenses. Mm -hmm. But you know that that lens is so nice too because it does have that. Uh, f -stop I have to tell you, I am a big fan of aperture rings. You know, here on this Cine lens, there are aperture rings and it can be clicked or declicked. Um, I, I, it was sad when first Canon and then Nikon got rid of aperture rings yep. on the lenses. Uh, this is, yes, I know you can do it here on your thumb wheel. I like to be able to look at the camera and see what it is. Now, okay, F8, I like that. Um, it isn't, uh, you know, someone could argue and say, well, that's old school. Yeah, yeah, it's old school. I'm old school, I like that. But it's also, you know, your hand is resting on the lens anyway when you're shooting, and to be able to be able to do your F-stop, I mean, that's how we used to do it. We have F-stop mm -hmm. and zoom and focus, and, you know, we would control everything. So uh, it just seems logical that uh, you'd put the F-stop ring on there. I can understand a lot of this fly-by-wire, set-by-wire, you know, lens technology, and it's mm -hmm. all electronic, That you know, why they do it the way it is. But when you do come across a lens like that, you do come to really appreciate uh, what that's all about. Yeah, I, I do. do. I do, too. That's why I wanted to mention that. Okay. Last but not least is um, a camera system that I think is now matured to the level that I would say that they've really figured it out, they really delivered, and they've completed their lens lineup. And I'm talking about the Olympus. This is the Olympus M5 Mark II, the OMD 5 Mark II. Uh, very, very, very capable camera. Uh, 
Mm -hmm. It's a micro four thirds, 16 megapixel, but the image quality coming from it is exceptional. Mm -hmm. And as Olympus started bringing these cameras online, and you know they've got a couple in the lineup at the, this point, they said they would bring in and their lens roadmap, their pro lenses. Uh, these are the lenses that were built specifically for the micro four thirds and the OMD, not the old four thirds lenses that were adapted. And these things focus fast. They are designed and they're brilliantly engineered. On the camera here is their newest lens. This is an eight millimeter sort of fisheye. Uh, you can see the kind of glass that it has. It's got a really, really pretty angle of view. Um, and you know, it would probably be a kind of an exceptional spot, but listen to this thing. I mean, this, it, it just has a beautiful feel, beautiful shoot, beautiful capabilities, touch screen menu, mm -hmm. uh, all the things that you've come to expect and they've really done a nice job. They've rounded it out with the 12 to 40 Pro lens and the new seven to 14 millimeter Pro lens. And once again, this is another one of these lenses that just has a magnificent piece of glass. Beautiful optical quality, sharp from corner to center. You know, you'd find very hard uh, to, to find fault with this. Mm -hmm. And you couple this with their 40 to 150 zoom lens that they have already and the 2X extender and one more lens to come according to them, which I think is a 300 millimeter, which would be a 600 millimeter equivalent. And you've got a system that can fit into a nice little small bag, lightweight, yeah. uh, that just is really you know, cutting edge. A uh, lot, lot to like about it. Uh, the only limitation is it is a 16 megapixel uh, oh. sensor. And if you're gonna make really big exhibition level prints, you're not going to get uh, the quality that you'd get from, let's say a uh, uh, 24 to 42 megapixel uh, camera. That's just laws of optics, laws of physics. It is, but. You know, but uh, for most people, most shooting, uh, this is a brilliant system. If you're looking for a lightweight system, you know, match this up with a P600 printer, you know, 11 inch, 13 inch width type printers, and you've got everything you need to produce marvelous photographs. So I, Commend Olympus for completing the line. Mm -hmm. I love shooting with this. My wife now uses this system, mm -hmm. and she's quite a photographer. She's a good photographer. A real good yeah. photographer, and she just loves this. And she really never does a lot of real big stuff, so this just fits. It fits her size, mm -hmm. and I, I'm sometimes jealous when I see what she comes out with. I mean, she really <laughs> has mastered this. So anyway, that pretty much wraps it up. The only thing I wanted to share one more time uh, is I've been now using this new Peak Design strap. Um, this is, as we've shown before, i uh, show it to you here. Essentially what's nice is it's got these little clips. So you can put these on any of your camera by one strap mm -hmm. and by pushing these in and then pulling them down and probably not doing this as good, but it just kind of clips in here. So here's right. the, the lugs for that on this. You can, they've got a wrist strap, which they call the leash. They've got a thin strap, which is nice for the smaller cameras. I use it on my Fuji. X100T, mm -hmm. and then this is the wider strap. And what's nice is when this sits there, they've got a, a non-slip uh, mm -hmm. part up here, and this automatically, by just loosening this and then oh, flipping nice. this back down, yeah. adjusts. So this can kind of you know sling over your shoulder, yeah, yeah. and you can adjust it and immediately pull it back out. So this is really cool, and Peak Design's doing some really clever things. But the fact that you know, you've got these lugs so that you know, if you're out there shooting in the field and you don't want the strap blowing in the wind, you can easily take them apart. No, that's great. Or if you just want to use the wrist strap and so forth. So. And so you feel that even on a heavy camera, well, that this is uh, let me tell you sturdy enough. Yeah. When I got the new Phase 1 XF camera, uh, they have in the kit this beautiful elk leather strap. <laughs> but somebody didn't tell us. A the Danish elk. Oh, I don't know <laughs> whose elk it was. But nobody bothered to tell the strap maker that the lugs for the strap were like an eighth of an inch smaller. Okay. So basically the strap wouldn't work. Right. So I said, oh, I need a strap on this thing. So I you know, put these things into the lugs and, you know, basically use this strap with the Phase 1 XF and didn't have any problem. These things are super strong. I don't see them having any problems. I haven't heard of any problems, haven't read about any problems. And uh, so, yes, I believe we can handle even the, the heavier great. camera. So they sell this as a kit? They sell it as a kit. There's a, a variety of solutions. This is one kit. They've got a thinner strap and they've got one called the leash. And one of the really cool things they have is a clip. So, for example, if we're carrying around a 
uh, camera bag, you can actually have this one thing that slides on a wide strap of your camera bag, and they've got uh, sort well, of like yeah, a... Yeah, I saw that. I saw that last week. And you can just week. clip it on. That's cool. And then pull it off when you want. So uh, they're very, very clever guys. They're, they're coming out with all sorts of clever things. So Peak design, huh? Peak design. Okay. So uh, that kind of also <laughs> uh, wraps it up. Okay. So <laughs> this brings us to the conclusion of another toy shop. Now, I keep asking myself, especially because it wasn't too long ago we did the last one, where are we going to find new toys? They keep appearing. So it's now <laughs> August. Uh, October's coming, which is Photo Plus East, and there are usually some surprises. Mm -hmm. My feeling is that the next surprises might not fit on this table. But uh, <laughs> we're going to find out what there is, and you can be sure that when we have some new toys and guaranteed that Michael and I will have new toys. <laughs> we'll be back here to share it with you. See you on the Luminous Landscape.